Awesome. So welcome everybody. We are so happy to have everybody here and so many new faces. I love it. We were just doing some introductions and so thank you. You guys can use the chat box to chat with each other, ask questions, um, let us know where you're calling from. If you're in the middle of a funnel, you know, let us know that you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, calm. <laughs> we have a party happening over here. So I am so excited about tonight. Um, many of you already know the amazing Eden Slobin and what a gem she is and how much um, wisdom she's brought with her as she's joined Isogenics. And she's trained from stage many times, done lots of events. Um, and I'm sure she's got a team here. So if you want to do a little bit of raise the roof here for Eden, if you're on her team, I'm sure she's got some teammates here. So welcome to our call. Um, could one of you guys control this four-year-old? <laughs> okay, so I don't want to waste any more of your time. I do want you to know that the objective here with these one team universities is to bring people together from all over the world and make sure that everybody knows that you are amongst a giant family and that we have your backs, we support you, we want to link arms with you, and we're so excited to see one another grow. So please make friends, use this as an opportunity to meet new people, and I cannot wait to see everybody here at you know the, ne the next event you can get to. We have a um, celebration coming up in Las Vegas. Mind me a little fist pump if you're going to Las Vegas. Maroon 5, I'm excited about that, but I'm mostly excited about just everything happening in Isogenic. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Eden, so I don't waste your time. But um, I love this woman. We've become good friends over the last year, and she has touched my heart as I've seen the love she has for the team. And I got my notebook and pen ready to take some massive notes. So let's go ahead and get started there. Eden, are you there? I sure hope so, because this is going to be an awkward hour. <laughs> Muted. Can you hear me okay, Trisha? I can hear you. Am yep. I coming in loud and clear? Perfectly clear? Loud and clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute everybody, and I'm going to turn it over to you, okay? Yes. And, um, oh, I hear myself echoing. Hey, babe, can you listen with the earphones? Do you know what it's like when you're talking and you hear yourself talking in the next room? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's super odd. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get you started. Let me find you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. All right, I somehow got muted again. All right, we're good. Um, first of all, I wanna thank you, Trisha, for having me. I'm extremely honored to be the second speaker in this series. I have been getting text messages from team members all week saying um, thank you so much for, for participating in this. They got so much value last week from everybody sharing their stories and Hayden talking about network marketing. It really, it really set the, the pace and it, and it, um, it set the standard for, for what we can really expect in the next six weeks. So I, I'm honored and humbled to be amongst uh, such great great speakers, um, such as Zach Slobin, my beautiful, my handsome husband, um, Ben Kelly, Emily and Hayden Vavra, and then of course, you, Trisha. Now, Trisha, just want to make sure I'm looking at the right screen. Um, when I look at speaker view, I'm looking at your living room. Is that what everybody's seeing? Is that, is that right? Trisha, can you see my face? I'm, I'm looking at a big screen of your, of your living room. I know this is, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Well, there we go. Um, awesome. And, and really, what it takes, the amount of time and effort that it takes to put something like this to get together and to corral Zach and me and, and the rest of the trainers um, really is no small feat. So, Trisha, thank you for your commitment to everybody feeling like they, like they have a home, like they have training that they can have access to, and, and um, we're, we're super grateful. So uh, my topic is something that's really close to my heart, and I'm going to get right into it briefly. I would love to share my story first. Um, just three and a half years ago, I was introduced to Isogenics, my very first network marketing company ever. And it was when my husband came into my life. 
Um, and Zach and I were just starting to date and the first time he took off his shirt and I noticed he had an eight pack of abs and I wanted to know what he used for his nutrition. And so he started bringing me shakes as a way to court me and uh, I fell in love with the shakes. I fell in love with the system and I had an amazing transformation in my first 30 days of using the system. Um, I was, I was down about 12 pounds, um, about 25 inches couple of dress sizes and more importantly I woke up out of a fog I didn't know I was living in and I just started to have all kinds of energy that I had forgotten on the playground as a kid because life got in the way and all kinds of challenges and limiting beliefs and things got into my head that really prevented me from living a life that I felt fulfilled in and network marketing has been this amazing journey of, of personal growth and stretching myself and learning to really connect with people. I no longer have to be behind a computer. I, I shared last week for those of you who are on that I, I was kind of trapped inside of an office for very many years, just watching what felt like life passed me by. And now I get to go out and live life because of Isogenic. So although I had been earning a six-figure income in corporate America, I worked my way up the ladder, although I didn't have any college degree or any, any kind of certification. I, I worked my way up. Um, I was able to replace a six-figure income, as was my husband, because of Isogenics. The last three and a half years have been, have been amazing. We've been able to travel the world. We work with a team of thousands of people. We're blessed with partners who we love. We're blessed with partners who we adore. And we're blessed with partners who we truly get to walk side by side, step by step, hand in hand, assisting them towards their goals because we take the time up front to truly understand what their goals are. And so we become accountable, accountability partners in, 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 in certain ways. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. But I really want to reassure those of you, especially for you who are brand new to this, Three and a half years ago, I had no skills. I had no network marketing skills, none whatsoever. And what's so nice is that there's so much training, there's so much available. And as long as you're willing to learn new skills and you're willing to follow simple templates and structures that are designed for your success, then you're gonna be successful. At first, you might not be that great. I certainly wasn't, and at times I'm still not. But it's okay because with every conversation, every time you have an opportunity to practice, you get better. I told a story over the weekend. I, I started taking dance class last week. And I, I go to my first dance class. I've always wanted to learn how to dance. And I couldn't learn an eight count inside of an hour. Just eight moves over and over and over and over again. And I couldn't, my, my brain wasn't, it just wasn't computing. My arms weren't communicating. My legs weren't communicating. with My mouth weren't. It just wasn't happening. But what I've learned through network marketing is that if I repeat it long enough, if I keep showing up to dance classes, class, if I keep practicing those basic eight steps, then once I do it over and over and over and over again, I'm going to learn how to do it effectively. And over time, Maybe in three years, five years, 10 years, I might be a pretty darn good dancer and maybe it won't even take that long. I know that I can compress the experience of learning how to dance into a year. If I want, I could take classes three times a week, practice on my downtime and, and probably become a pretty good dancer within a year from now. Or I could go once a week, maybe not practice that much. And in three years, I'll be pretty good. In five years, I might be really great. And it's the same thing with network marketing, how often you want to have the conversation, how often you want to connect with people, how often you want to ask people to take a look, how often you're going to be willing to ask some of the tougher, more uncomfortable questions at first so that you can have an opportunity to really develop your skills and they have an opportunity to really be successful here. Zach would hammer me at the beginning and, and my husband, you'll hear from him next week. He's amazing. He is 10 years in the profession now. And so he would just hammer on me. You got to ask more questions. You're talking too much. Ask more questions. He kept saying, ask more questions, ask more questions. He'd tell me, he said, God gave you two ears and one mouth. What does that tell you? And so I started to learn that asking more questions was able to, allowed me to elicit the, the response that people have their own answers to what they're looking for. 
and that all we can do is be tour guides. All we can do is learn how to ask the right question, learn how to move people through a series of a process to get them to really open up and share with us what it is they're looking for. And so what I'm about to teach you is what I learned from Zach. And it is responsible, this process, this formula that I'm about to teach you is so responsible for much of the success that we've been blessed with because it's given me a roadmap to the sale. I'm going to give you a roadmap to every single sale. Now, this is something called the discovery process. And I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, let's see, share screen. Okay. Now, you should see what looks like an onion. And if you don't, somebody who has my phone number, please text me. This is representative of what we're talking about today. The, the roadmap to the sale, the process of getting your customers to unveil what it is they're looking for is much like peeling back the layers of an onion. Now, I want you to keep in mind that as I share this process, this can be utilized in one-on-one -on -one conversations whether you're face-to-face -face or you're on the phone. This can be utilized on a three-way call. This can be utilized with a current customer, a current team member. This process can even be applied to a coaching call, trying to keep a team member inspired or remind them why they started in the first place. This process can be applied to absolutely anything that we're that we're doing in this business. And so we, we call this the discovery process. And the discovery process is really the secret sauce to moving through the sale and ending up with a successful result with a customer or, or a partner that feels like they've been heard, that feels excited, that is very clear on what they're here for, and you being crystal clear on what their why is so that you have the ability to come back later and really hold them accountable, hold up a mirror to them. If they ever decide that they are going to quit or if they ever don't follow through with what they say they're going to do, doing the discovery process properly is going to hedge against that. It's going to allow you to have a, a higher amount of retention because you're doing such a good job in the beginning. And here's the secret sauce. It's a really simple. Here's the secret sauce to the discovery process. The first thing is you're going to listen and you're actually going to care about what's being shared with you. This is a relationship business. And so you absolutely must really care about the, the, the answers that you're getting to your questions. And, and here's what listening means. And it took me a really hard time to learn what it means to listen. And I'm still at sometimes learning what it means to listen. Listening means to not think of what your next question is going to be when you're, when your prospect or when the person you're talking with is still talking. It means being out of your head and listening with your heart when somebody you're talking with is speaking. So getting out of your head, coming from your heart, listening from that space, and truly caring about what's being said. And then, of course, asking questions. There's a formula that you're going to want to master called QAQ, question, answer, question. You ask a question, your prospect gives you an answer, and you ask another question. You heard me say we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And so if we can ask the right questions, then we can draw from a person all of the answers. People have their own answers already. And then, of course, there's emotional anchoring. We must emotionally anchor a person into why they want to do this in the first place. And we get to create upfront agreements so that they know what they can expect from us and we know what, they can, what we can expect from them. And that's where accountability and partnership comes into play. And so there's a formula for this. There's the formula for the discovery process. And if you're taking notes, that's great. Um, we have a template that we can circulate in PDF form with a lot of these notes later um, if you want to just listen in. But, but take notes. Step one of the formula is to build rapport. So just like you've learned when it comes to three-way calls or any conversation that you're having with the discovery process, you're always going to build rapport. 
Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on, on building rapport or using FORM, but just very briefly, FORM stands for, the F stands for family or from, where a person is from. O stands for occupation, R stands for recreation, and M stands for motivation. So building rapport using FORM might include questions like, if it's a new, if it's somebody that I'm meeting for the first time, you know, a question about where they're from. So are you, are you from San Diego or when did you move down here? Where are you from originally? I might ask them a question about their occupation. So curiously, what, what keeps the lights on? What do you do for work? A question about recreation might be, what do you like to do for fun or motivation? What, what really motivates you? What gets you going? What are you doing all of this for? Or perhaps I'm reconnecting with somebody that I already know. So same thing. I might just ask them a question about their family. So how are the kids doing? What's, you know, what, what, is there anything new? Are, are the kids good? Is your, husband, is your husband doing well? How's work? How's soccer? Are you still playing softball? Because I know something about them. So this is quick. This is just to connect so you're not going right into business right away. And you might want to spend a minute, a minute and a half on this. And this should be at the beginning of every call. This is just, this is catching up. Is everything okay? Even when I call a team member, before I get into any business with them, I'm always going to check in. How's your family? How's your husband? How's work? How's life? Everything good? Great. And then we're going to move on to the next part of the conversation. So in the discovery process, you're always going to start with rapport using form. And then step two is you're gonna help them take their guard down. So I'm gonna use the example of a three-way call. Okay, so let's say I'm being put on the phone with a prospect named Susie. Once I've built rapport, once I've found common ground with her, now I'm going to allow her to take her guard down. She probably thinks I'm on the phone to sell her something. So I like to say this, this is the language that I like to use that works really well. I like to say, Look, Susie, I'm really excited to connect with you. I've been using and sharing Isogenics passionately for the last three and a half years, and I'm really here to serve you as best I can on this call today. How can I serve you on this call? Simple. I'm coming from a place of service that allows them, that allows Susie to take down her guard. Now she doesn't feel like she's being sold. She feels like it's about her. We're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about her. We're here to discover what are the ways in which we can serve her. And not only does that make her put her, pull her guard down, but that also allows her to feel really special. So I'm just here to serve you in this conversation. How can I serve you today? I start every call that way. And then next, they're either going to share with me what their goal is, or I'm going to have to start prying and asking questions. So if they've shared with me what their goal is, now I'm just going to edify their goal. So if Susie tells me, you know, here's how you can serve me, Eden. I, I noticed my friend losing weight. I, 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 I really, I feel like, you know, I, I'd love to lose 25 pounds. That would be amazing for me. So now I'm going to edify that goal. I'm going to say, Susie, that's so awesome that you want to lose that weight. It's totally possible here. In fact, when I first got started, it wasn't before long that I was down 12 pounds and 25 inches. It's totally life-changing. You're going to love it. You can absolutely accomplish that. So I'm going to edify her goal. Now, if she didn't say directly what her goal is, we're now going to identify what their goal is. We're going to ask them questions like, so what are you looking to achieve? Or what are some of your health goals? Or what piqued your interest that has us on the call today? Another thing you can ask in this this is always fun as you can ask, hey, you know, I know that I know Stephanie sent you some videos to check out. What did you like most about the videos? Based on what they share with you about what they liked most about the videos, you're usually going to get some indication about what they want to accomplish. So for example, if when you ask them, what did you like most about the videos, they say something like, you know, I love it. Looks like everybody's losing weight with this product and that's really exciting. Bingo. Now you know what it is that they're, that they're seeking the most. Or they might say something like, everyone in the video just looks young and sprightly and they have so much energy and that's really exciting. 
great. Now you know that having more, having more energy is really at the core of why you're on the call. Or you might even hear something like, you know, all those people, they, they seem so real and they're making really good money doing this. That really piqued my interest. Now you know that that really is what's most exciting to them and that's where you're gonna wanna zero in first. So we're gonna always identify the goal. Now let's just say in this example of Susie, Susie wants to lose 25 pounds, great. Um, okay, great. Susie wants to lose 25 pounds. Now, most people, most people, especially if you don't know them well, they might be a little bit vague with what they're looking to achieve. So they might say, all right, I'd like to lose some weight. Now, here's my magic question. Well, Susie, if you had a magic wand, how much weight would you like to lose? Or if you had a magic wand, how much additional income would you like to create? Whatever it is they've said their goals are, you're now asking them if they had a magic wand and you're getting a more specific answer. Now, the beauty of asking this question is it really allows them to dream. So sometimes, let's take Susie and her 25 pounds. In fact, not sometimes, oftentimes, most of the times, the person that the first answer that they give you about the weight loss isn't their actual answer. It's what they think is realistic. So they'll say something like, well, you know, realistically, I'd like to lose like 25 pounds. That would be awesome. Okay, cool. But forget about realistically. If you had a magic wand, how much weight would you like to lose? If you had magic wand and you could wave it one time, how much weight would you like to lose? Or somebody might say, you know, I really would like to, to earn an extra $500 a month. Like that, that would be pretty cool. Great, pretty cool is awesome, but what if you had a magic wand? If you had a magic wand, how much additional income would make a radical difference in your life right now? You're allowing them to dream with this question so that they can get out of what they think is a realistic answer based on what they've known before being exposed to isogenics, and you're getting them to really come outside of that and dream about what might be possible for them if they did have a magic wand. Step four is we're now going to elicit an emotional response. It's so important that we anchor them in emotionally to why they're doing this. Because most people, again, take the example of Susie. Let's say Susie says, even after my magic wand question, you know what, Eden, 25 pounds, like that would be the perfect weight for me. Great. Most people stop there. And that's where the mistake gets made. Because if I stopped there and I moved on to just recommend a pack or answer a couple more questions for her, I wouldn't know why she wants to lose the 25 pounds. And so what happens when Susie wakes up on day 14 and she's not where she wants to be or the voice in her head starts talking or somebody tries to discourage her, what's going to happen if Susie decides to quit or if at the end of her first 30 days she says, you know what, I lost 10 pounds, I feel awesome, like I'm good, I'm just going to try real food or whatever excuse she comes up with to try to sabotage herself out of losing those 25 pounds, what recourse do I have as a mentor, as a sponsor, as a friend? if I don't truly understand why she wants to lose the 25 pounds in the first place. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna gauge her level of commitment. So I'm gonna ask a question like, on a scale of one to 10, Susie, how important is it to you that you lose the 25 pounds? And hopefully, hopefully she's gonna say a 10. Sometimes people say a six or a seven, and I'll always ask them, what would it take to get you to a 10? Now, more often than not, they just still have some questions that have to be answered. But I always tell them, I say, look, it's so important that we get you to a 10 because if we can get you to a 10, then I can match your energy and I can be there every step of the way to see you to your goal. So again, example of, of Barbara. Barbara wants to make an extra $500 a month. Curiously, Barbara, on a scale of one to 10, how important is it to you that you bring an extra $500 a month into your household? Barbara's gotta be at a 10. And I know that because I know what it takes. 
She's got to be a 10 at a 10 in her desire because that way she's going to be able to withstand rejection, learn new skills. She's going to be willing to be coachable. She'll be willing to get on the team calls because she wants it badly enough. And so this is also a way that I'm kind of protecting my time and where I'm investing my time because I want to work with people who are at a 10. And so if they're not at a 10, I always ask, what will it take to get you to a 10? And people really respect that question. And then I'll ask something like, Susie, what would losing 25 pounds do for you that you can't do right now? What would it allow you to do that you can't do right now? And she might say something like, it would allow me to feel great in my clothes. Okay, now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Susie, why is it important to you that you feel great in your clothes? And now we're starting to peel back the layers of the onion. Remember that everybody's always going to give you a surface answer. They don't want to feel the depths of the emotional pain that they're experiencing that's causing them to really want to do this in the first place. But it's our responsibility, as uncomfortable as it might feel on our end, none of that matters because we get to be a stand for the people that we're working with. So let's keep going with, with this example of Susie. So Susie, we've now discovered, wants to lose 25 pounds because she really wants to feel better in her clothes. Now, here's where the magic really happens. This is called the seven deep technique because believe it or not, Susie wanting to feel sexy or Susie wanting to feel good in her clothes still is a very surface answer. So we're going to start to peel back the layers and if you've noticed, I'm just asking questions. My prospect is giving me all my answers. Susie's giving me all my answers. So I'm going to ask Susie again. Susie, why is it important that you feel good in your clothes? Okay, so I'm asking her for the second time. Why is it important that you feel good in your clothes? Well, you know, I, I feel like I just would feel sexier. Susie, why is it important that you feel sexier? Well, I know that my husband was more attracted to me when I was thin. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Susie, why is, it, why is it important to you that your husband feels attracted to you? Because I feel disconnected from him. Susie, why is it important that you feel connected to your husband? Because I saw my parents growing up and they, they were always disconnected and I want something different for my kids. Okay, so Susie, why is it important that you have a connected relationship for your kids? Because I don't want them to deal with divorce like I did. Okay, so Susie, if I hear you correctly, what you're really saying is that you want to lose 25 pounds so that you can strengthen the relationship with your husband and keep your marriage together for your family. Is that what I'm hearing? Now we've cut straight to the center of that onion. Now I know exactly why Susie wants to lose 25 pounds and it's not so she looks good in her clothes. And it's because I was willing to ask seven times, Susie, why is it important to you? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? And when you do it seven times, you get to the core of it every time. And so you've got to really, this is where being caring really comes into it. You've got to care enough. You've got to love the person that you're talking with enough to really want to get to the center of what it is that they themselves are trying to hide from. And it's the same thing when it comes to the financial conversation. Why is it important to you that you earn an extra $500 a month? And you just ask them and allow them to truly discover they have their own answers. You're just facilitating what those answers look like. And so now you have a really deep emotional response from the person that you're talking with. And oftentimes they're gonna start crying and you're, you're gonna get to be okay with that because you're acting in service of them. That way when, when Susie decides to quit at 30 days, you're gonna call her up and say, Susie, when you shared with me that you wanted to complete a 25 pound transformation so that you could feel connected to your husband and your, your, your marriage could stay in, intact for your family. Were you serious about that or were you just kidding around? And Susie's going to say, you know what? Thank you for reminding me of that. That's why I came here in the first place. You're right. All right. What do I do next month? And it's just going to bring her right back to it. So we're just 
We're peeling back the layers. And then we go into step five, and step five is a little bit more fun. Step five is story time. Now we're gonna share a story with Susie of somebody that reminds me of her. So Susie, you totally remind me of my cousin Megan. Megan got started after having her second baby also. She lost 20 pounds, 27 inches, and she's kept it off for the last three years. You're gonna love this. You're gonna absolutely love this. Or I'll tell her another story. We're always going to pull from stories that relate to the person's goal and what they're looking to achieve. And so for the person that wants to earn an extra $500 a month, I might tell the story of my friend Sarah Barnard, who was able to um, who was able to to earn that same amount, just working very very part time and 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 sharing organically, and it built up so much that she was actually able to retire her husband from his part time job so that he could pursue the things that he loves. How awesome is that? So now I'm just telling stories. And stories is all just about valid, validating their goals, knowing that they can achieve that here. Super simple. And so when it comes to telling stories, that's why if your team has a call that you can listen to, um, Zach and I do an open call to the community every Tuesday morning where we have people come on and share their stories. There's lots of different leaders that do, that do uh, calls like that. There's tons of testimonial videos that are floating around in all the different groups. Watch some of those videos, read the stories, have, have some stories in your, in your arsenal. When you go to events, connect with people, ask what their stories are because you wouldn't believe how many times a story that you wouldn't even consider would be important is going to come into play. Like we have somebody on our team who's a triathlete. Now, every time I meet a triathlete, I tell his story. We have runners on our team. Every time I meet a runner who wants to set a new running time, I might tell Nick Carter's story because I'm paying attention to the stories that are taking place inside of the company. And that's something that's just going to come over time. But in here, once you've really gotten to the core of what a person wants, you want to try to offer them a story that's going to relate to what it is that they want to create. And then step six, you want to make sure that they feel informed. You want to make sure that they feel complete with the conversation. So I'll always ask questions like, so are there any other questions I can answer for you? Or what other questions can I answer for you? So just to recap, now at this point, I'm clear on what their goal is. I'm clear on the emotional reason underneath what they think their goal was, really what the driver is. I've told a story a couple of times so that they know how possible and feasible it is for them to create that here. That really builds their confidence that they're in the right place. And now I'm just going to ask them, what are some other questions I can answer for you? Now, because everybody I talk with has watched a video, has looked at a resource, more often than not, aside from a random basic question, so continuing to use the, the example of a three-way call, Somebody might ask, well, what do the days look like? And I'll say something very simple. I'll say, you know what? It's really easy. Everything is going to come in your box. There's going to be a system guide inside of your box, a Facebook group. There's tons of resources. It's really all you need to know is that it is extremely simple to follow. And then I'm going to ask again, what are some questions? What are some other questions I can get answered for you? Or are there any other questions I can get answered for you? Now, in a typical three-way call, we might only be 15 minutes in at this point. My three-way calls take a total from start to finish following this discovery process about 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. You can cut to it really quickly. You don't have to spend an hour with the person crying on the phone. You just, as soon as you get to the core of it, you move on to the story. Once you've completed with the story, what are some other questions I can answer for you? Make sure they feel informed. Make sure that they feel satisfied. Now, usually at this point, what they'll say is, you know what? The videos were great and you've done a great job at answering my questions. How do I get started? Or what can you tell me about the packs? They'll usually say either, I don't have any questions or you've done a great job you know, what's the cost? What does it look like to get started? Okay, so if they've asked me that, great. I'm now gonna present a couple of packs to them and I'll give you the language 
um, around what that looks like. It's just, I keep it very, very simple. And if they just say, no, I don't have any questions, then I'm going to ask them, great. Would you like for me to make a couple of recommendations for how to get started? So I'm going to ask them so that they're buying in. I want to, I want them to say yes as many times as possible. So would you like for me to make a couple of recommendations for how to get started? And they'll say yes, or they'll ask me directly to make those recommendations. So I'm going to say great. Based on the goals that you shared with me, based on the goals that you shared with me, there are two packs I would recommend. One I would recommend much more highly than the other. Now again, just in, in sticking with the three-way call spirit, of course, you can still use the discovery process in different conversations, but while we're on the topic of three-way calls, we might as well wrap it with a bow. So there's two different packs I'd recommend, although one I would recommend much more highly than the other. So the first pack I'd recommend is a very basic pack, okay? I'm using very specific language. It's a very basic pack. It comes with your two shakes a day, so you're getting your two meals replaced for you, and it comes with the full system of products, but it's just a very basic kind of stripped down system. You'll still have everything you need, but it's basic. That pack breaks down to $10 a day. It's $2.72 for your full 30 days. However, the pack I would most strongly recommend based on the goals you shared with me is the value pack. The value pack breaks down to $20 a day. It's $5.59 for your full 30 days. But in addition to the basic pack, you'll also get delicious chocolates that you can use on cleanse days. You'll get a box of meal replacement bars, which you can also use as snacks. You're going to get a free blender, a free $75 event coupon if you choose to attend an event. You're going to get AM and PM vitamins that go a long way for mental clarity, energy, and focus. And you're also going to get your choice of a sample pack or energy shots, which taste amazing. Or I don't say they taste amazing because I don't love the taste, but um, or energy shots, which are amazing. They're one of my favorite products. Which pack makes the most sense for you? And I'll say something like. If this pack makes sense with your budget, if this pack works with your budget, then I 100% recommend that you get started with it. You're gonna have the most amazing experience. So I'm not belittling the 30-day system, the basic getting started pack, and there's still some people that get started that way, but I know what a higher success rate people have when they have the chocolates, when they have the bars, when they have the vitamins, when they have the whole experience. And then I also know that from a duplication standpoint, when they start to share, that's going to be most beneficial for them. So I try to get everybody started on the, on the value pack, on the president's pack. And it's just simple. There's a $10 a day option or a $20 a day option. Both options, you're going to be saving money on food. Most people are spending more than, than $20 a day on their food right now. And so it's just a reallocation. And so there's tons of podcasts that, that, that use this language, but I just, I keep it really, really simple and that's it. So in this, at this step six, I'm answering any questions that they might have and I'm making a recommendation for them. And now step seven is the most overlooked step of the entire process. It's where people make them the biggest mistake because they skip it. It's the most important part. It's the reason why you got on the call in the first place. And step seven, you get to ask for the order. Don't expect that people are going to say, okay, I'm ready to order. Let's do it. You've got to ask for the order. And so the way that I ask every time is, so do you feel like you have enough information to get started today? And then I zip my lips. So do you feel like you have enough information to get started today? And then I let them respond. Sometimes there's a little bit of silence and you might want to jump in, but just like with any question that you're asking in this entire process, you ask the question and you zip your lips and you let them speak. And so most of the time, if I've done a really good job in the discovery process, if I've anchored them in emotionally to why they want to do this in the first place, if I've edified through using different stories that they can relate to, then at this point, if they have the money in their bank account, they're getting started. There's no reason why they shouldn't get started. None. However, 
some people, depending on their personality, might say something like, you know, I still want to get more information. Great. What would you like to, what more, what information would you like to learn more about specifically? What specifically would you like to learn more about? And I try to answer their questions on the phone. Once I have them on the phone, I want them to get started. So usually, more often than not, again, if I've done a really good job at building the value, you in creating that connection and, and eliciting, drawing the, the emotionality out of them as to why they really want to do this so they feel anchored into it, they should be, they should be pulling out their credit card before I can even ask. Um, and that's what happens more often than not. And sometimes there are people who want to think about it. They want to think about it and I usually ask them what, what is some information I can get them specifically and then I'm going to book a follow-up call. If they do want to take their time, that's okay too. I'm not attached to getting them started. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, whatever, I'm not a vulture, right? I want to help them get started for them. And so sometimes it might be getting back. They have to talk to their husband. They don't, they, they run all their per big purchases by their husband. Great. When do you think you'll have a chance to talk with your husband for sure? Oh, I'm going to talk to him tonight. Awesome. Why don't we touch base tomorrow morning then? Will you have speak, spoken to him by then? Yes, I will. Wonderful. How's 10 a.m. tomorrow morning? Does that work for you? Yes, it does. So I'm just booking the next call. So you're always going to ask for the order. Don't make the mistake of avoiding this, this part. It's, the most important part. It's the juiciest part. And um, yeah, that's what I have for you guys. I know that this is scheduled for, I believe, an hour, but Trisha, um, I know last week you did some Q&A. Happy to answer any questions. Yes. Wow. Awesome. And such good stuff. We've had a new comment. So we go ahead and... Hold on one second. Now, did my, my screen share turned off, right, Trisha? Um, did you turn no. Off? There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. So keep your your line and muted, Eden. Um, okay. So guys, um, we have, let me mute again. Make sure your phones are muted, guys. Okay, I think we're good now. All right, awesome. Wow, okay, so such good stuff. And thank you for allowing everybody to have those slides. That's, that's awesome. Um, or the PDF that you have for your team. So guys, what are your questions? The chat has been blowing up. I know you guys have been loving this. Let's uh, start out with one or two people if you wanna share what were your takeaways. You can go ahead and unmute your phone. Um, one of my biggest takeaways, I'm Sabrina, by the way, I'm on Tree Naples um, team. Thanks for including us. You guys are amazing. And wow, the wording and the verbiage, so helpful. Um, peeling back the onion and making them feel that you do care and that it's not just about a sale, but really getting to the emotional root of why they're starting. Like you hear all along in this journey, what is your why? And it's been unclear to me, like how to get that out of somebody. So that was very helpful. Thank you. Awesome. That's, an, that's a great share. And thank you. Thank you. And for those of you listening, um, and you might not be clear on your own why, write down the question, why is it important to me that I blank? Why is it important to me that I lose 50 pounds? Why is it important to me that I make an extra thousand dollars a month? Why is it important to me that I, whatever, answer the question, ask yourself seven times, why is it important to me that I do this? You'll get to your why. Thank you for that share. Um, I also see that there was a question. Um, Marlis asked me to repeat the portion where I say I'm there to serve them on the call. Yes, Marlis. So right after I'm, I'm, I'm building rapport, I'm finding a common ground just very briefly, I say something like, um, you know, I've been, I've been, um, I'm excited to be on the call with you today. I've been using and passionately sharing isogenics for the last three and a half years. And I'm really just here in service of you today. How can I serve you on our call today? I'm really here to serve you. How can I serve you on the call today? That's the language I use every time.
Okay. Hi. This is Jen. Um, Aiden, I have to say, I saw you speak to pretty much the same stuff at ICU um, in the fall in Phoenix. And I was just at the beginning of starting to enroll people. And so it's awesome to hear it again now that I have more. It was super helpful then. And it's super helpful again because now I have some experience to help apply it. But um, one of my biggest takeaways is I was in the corporate world in sales and account management for years. And I've, you know, we've been, I've been trained on the peeling the onion so many times, but just um, what you went over on the example that you gave about just keeping, keep asking why is that so important? Why is it so important for you to lose the weight? Why is it so important for you to, you know, have the energy to play with your kids and getting super deep because as many times as I've been trained on that, it, um, I, I don't do it. I don't do it. So it was really kind of great to hear that example. Awesome. Um, thank you for that share. And Everything that I shared with you guys tonight is what I've learned from Zach. I've heard him just hammer that, that seven deep techniques so many times. And I do it on all my calls now and it works every single time. So for those of you who really got a lot out of, out of that seven deep technique, and that was a big aha for you, send Zach a message, post on his timeline. Thank him for, for teaching me because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him teaching me. So great share. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Eden, this is Lofty. Hey, hey, Vasi. Hey, I have a quick question. So let's say that you're meeting somebody just on the street or uh, at a store or somebody, just getting to know them. How do you go through these steps? How much do you go through these steps with somebody you just met? So I wouldn't go right into this. Um, again, you can, use a, you can use a variation of this process, but what I would always want to do is have them watch some videos before I'm going to go really deep into what it is that they want, why it is that they want it um, in, in this capacity, right? The, the discovery conversation is, is really um, allowing them to emotionally root so I can, I can enroll them in, in, in the idea of partnership, the idea of getting on products, et cetera. There's, um, there's a past, present, future conversation that we teach and that actually, um, I, I, I also talked about that at, at University of Phoenix. We have, um, Zach did a team call. If you send me a private message and remind me, I can, I can look it up. Zach did a what to say Wednesday call. And that's a really appropriate conversation to have with somebody to really uncover what it is they'd rather be doing um, more than what they're doing and you can start to peel back a little bit more superficially. I don't know if somebody that you just meet, you want to like have them bawling everywhere before they've really looked at anything. Um, but, but you can, you can really apply these skills to anything where you, where you feel it's appropriate. I guess where I'm having a little bit of a challenge or I just like to learn more is how I get somebody to even look at the videos. Like what questions can I ask so that I can know that there's interest to watch the videos? So, so that what, so what to say Wednesday will have it. Um, the, yep, the what to say Wednesday has it. And then we also have templates. Um, we have a site that is open to everybody with some, with some great tools called our easy training.com. That's O U R E Z training.com. And under first base, we have a template, um, that will allow you to reach out to people and ask them to take a look. And it gives you everything that we do is in templates. Tonight, this is a template. Reaching out to connect with people is a template. Past, present, future is a template. Form is a template. Everything is a template and it can all kind of be, you know, inter interwoven. So those, those will help. Great question, Vasti. Thank you. I'm sorry. Can you give us that website again? Yes, it's OurEasyTraining.com, so it's O-U-R-E-Z, the letters E and Z, training.com, and the templates that I'm referring to are specifically about reaching out to people, asking them to take a look. So um, on that site, under first base, it's designed kind of like a baseball diamond, so under first base, there's a template called the top-down approach which is, um, you know, asking people to take a look at the opportunity. And if that's not for them, then you can always default on the products. But that has some great language in there that you can use. Thank you. Hey, Judy. You're welcome. Hey, Judy. 
Hey, um, someone else had the question in chat too, but like, I really like how you did the peeling back the onion. And I have come across people that when you ask them more about it, they're like, I, they say, I don't know. And they seriously, I guess, haven't went there yet. So how do you handle that moment where they just don't give you anything else? So the precursor to those questions is always on a scale of one to 10. How, how committed are you to achieving blank? And you repeat their goal back to them. If somebody's much less than a 10, they'll probably want to stay on the surface because they might not be ready to go there. We can only do our best. Sometimes people are so closed off that they will not go there, but they also might not be ready to really make a change in their life. So we just do our best and we ask and we, if we can show up truly in service and allow them to feel our heart, then maybe they can feel safe with us in a way that they haven't felt safe with anybody in a long time to really be able to open up. Great question. What else we got? Any other questions? I see somebody asked, what is the M in form? The M is motivation. Um, if there are any other questions or takeaways, would love to would love to hear from you guys. Hey, Eden, this is April, also from San Diego. Hey, April. Thank you. That was awesome. Just a question as far as peeling back the layers. If you most likely get people to a point where they're crying, do you have any specific transitioning to get them from there into just sharing stories, or it's just individual base sometimes just give them a moment sometimes if they really get very vulnerable i say thank you for sharing that with me thank you for trusting me with that information that's great just let them have their moment yeah thank you hi i have a question Hi, I have a question. Hi. Hi. Regarding, what if you know that they cannot afford the president's pack? I mean, you guys don't talk about the pay setters pack, so I was just wondering, what what do you say if you know they can't afford it, but you know it's a better, it's a lot better deal than the basic pack? How do you know that they don't, they can't afford it? Well, if they're a, a good friend of mine and they tell me that they can't afford the six hundred dollars, I usually know that. So I prefer the president's pack. Not everybody can get started or will get started with the president's pack, but I'm going to do my best job at presenting the value of that pack because of what I know it will do for their experience. I'm not attached to what pack they get started with. I'm just a stand for them having the best experience. With that said, I just had somebody today in Hawaii who has a hat collection, a hat collection, who sold off her hats to get a president's pack because of how the value was presented to her. Price is absent in the presence of value. What we think we might know about people's financial situations, we have no idea. We don't know what they have in savings account, on their credit cards. We don't know we don't know. We don't. Trisha sold her fridge to get started. So again, it all depends on what they want, why they want it, and how how much of an emotional connection you can help them create to why they want this in the first place. And I'm not attached to what they get. That's up to them. Thank you. That makes sense. It's all about the presentation too. So thank you very much. Yes. Yes. And, and, and one more thing, you know, it's, I invite everybody not to carry any energy around $600 being a lot of money for anybody. Just don't carry the energy because we don't know what somebody's relationship is like with money and, and if it's a lot to them or not a lot to them. We just never know. We never know. Great question. Great question. And, and the company also has a motto. I'll just toss this out there for those of you who are a little bit newer to the community. 
We educate, you decide, we support. I'm gonna turn on, yeah, I'm gonna turn on a light. I'll be right back, it's kind of dark. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so guys, I am saving this chat so you guys will have it. All these recordings are going to be posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find that at Trisha Wilkins, and it's under One Team University. It'll have Eden's name on there. Um, there are some great ones for uh, explaining the, the, the packs and how to break it down. Chris Harder has an amazing... Um, video on our one team university where he really breaks down how he shares packs and and breaks down their daily routine So that's a great one. I just want to thank everybody for getting on I know the time is up here and I want um, Eden to go ahead and close us out But I just wanted to tell everybody. Thank you so much for your energy for having questions and uh, And for sharing all your thoughts in the chat and again that will be posted and um, in our Facebook group you can take that off of there all right, so Eden, you want to go ahead and close us up here? Yeah, um, thank you again for, for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm truly honored. And um, I kind of opened up talking about my, my dance journey and how I kind of suck at it right now. And I'm willing to suck long enough and keep going until I get good at it because I know the payoff is going to be really rewarding. And this journey is no different. So for those of you who are brand new, I commend you on being here. Stick with it. The journey's amazing. And for those of you who maybe you've been around for a little while, just keep practicing. And what we covered tonight is gold. It's a template and it works. So learn the template, practice the template. You can even, once the PDF gets circulated, give me a day or so and I'll get it to you, Trisha, and, and we'll find a way to circulate it. Once you have it, you could literally read off of it during your conversations and just carry the confidence in knowing that you're doing your best to serve everybody that you're talking with and that's the best you can do. So thank you again for having me. I'm super grateful to be here. Thank you so much, Eden. We adore you. So thank you for that. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you, and we will see you guys next week. We love you all, and hope to see you again soon. Bring your teams, invite them, make a part of it. It's really run the fest. Bye. Thank you. Awesome.